we're always subject to those changes when we're in material consciousness. But when we're in spiritual consciousness, we're transcendental. What does that mean? We're in the eternal realm, where everything is the same. Everything is constant. There's no beginning and no end. No changes, no time, only eternity. Uh, it doesn't mean that things are static. Uh, it means that we're in a higher dimension. Let me explain. Everybody got this mantra? Okay. Well, I don't have an eraser anyway, so. Oh, let me get you stuck with it. <laughs> you, you want some, let me get you some. Yeah, some paper towels yeah. or something. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, here's a line from point A to point B. Okay, how many dimensions are there in a line? One. One. Right. That means I only need one number to describe the length of this line. Huh? Let's call it x. So when I say the line is x centimeters or x inches, that completely describes the line, doesn't it? At least as far as the line itself is concerned. But then what if I have another line? Now what do I have? Two dimensions. Two dimensions, exactly. I have a plane. And my plane has x and it also has y. So now I need two numbers to describe this. I can say it's, it's x feet long by y feet wide. But now, suppose that I have a third line at right angles to both of these. Now what do I have? Anybody? Three dimensions. Three dimensions. A little isometric drawing here. So now I need a third number, z. Okay. Now I have a solid, three dimensions. It takes three numbers to describe it: length, height, width. But this thing exists in time. So now what have I got? I've got another dimension, which we don't know exactly the relationship between them, do we? Called t. It comes into existence at a particular point, whatever this object is. And then it exists for a certain period of time, and then at some point it disappears. That's time. Time is inescapable in the material world. Everything is subject to time. Uh, there's nothing that can escape the influence of time. Uh, okay. What's the difference between these three dimensions and this dimension? As far as our experience. Well, the first three, we kind of think we can move in them, even though only within limited distance. The fourth one, we are kind of slave to a movement in one direction, and we can't do anything about it. We can't even imagine what it means to reverse the direction. Precisely. For the those on the web, Uwe said that we can move around in the three physical spatial dimensions, but we can't really influence our passage through time. Because it's, it's as if we're in a river. It's like we're in a leaf floating on a river, and the river is moving downstream towards the ocean, and there's nothing we can do about it. The fish doesn't know that he's in the water. A fish could never discover water, <laughs> because the fish uh, is a part of that medium, so thoroughly embedded in that medium. He has no distance from it, so he can't observe it. Remember the cat in the black room? The black cat in the black room? Huh? The fish can't see the water. So neither can we perceive time. Uh, because we have no distance from it. Uh, we're stuck in it. It's, to us, it's one-dimensional. Just a line. So, we have no awareness of time directly. So how do, we, how do we measure time? We have to make some machine, a clock, that will tick away the seconds. And then we know time. Uh, but directly, we can't measure time. 
Sometimes, to us, time seems going very quickly. When we're having fun, when we're in the groove, when things are happening, time goes fast. When we're in the dentist chair, time goes very slow. <laughs> but what is really happening? Uh, we're inexorably being pushed down that river of time by the current. There's nothing we can do about it. It may sometimes seem to go fast, sometimes seem to go slow, but we can't get out of it. Because this body, being a material object, this mind, being material, is always subject to time. But what if there was another dimension? of the same nature. What if there was eternity? No. What if instead of just a line, all of a sudden we had a plane of the same quality? What if we could detach ourselves from the river of time that we're in and view it like from above and see how, oh yeah, this time is moving like that, things are going like that. Uh, that would be a whole different experience, wouldn't it? Yeah. So this is what happens when we begin to uh, change our consciousness from material to spiritual. We actually taste eternity. We start to become aware of a new dimension that we weren't aware of before. And this gives us a new freedom, uh, which you, if you think about it, we actually already have. What is memory? Uh, when you think of something that happened a long time ago, it's like you're there, isn't it? Especially if you return to the experience, like in depth psychology or something like that, and you relive the actual impressions that you uh, originally experienced at that time. It's just like being there. And then we have things like video and audio recordings where we can actually record the impressions that we would have if we were present at a certain event. And this way we can relive that event again. But this is actually means movement in time. The consciousness is transcendental. And therefore consciousness can locate itself at any point in space or time. You know, if we think of being uh, someplace where, let's say, we were uh, when we were younger, and we remember those times, then we're there. So actually, we can move in time to a limited degree. Uh, it's not very clear. It's not as clear as our present experience because we're relying on memory instead of actual sensory input. But in a sense, we're moving in time uh, when we remember. Now, what if there was even a third dimension to time? What would that look like? These are all these things are all described in the Vedas, by the way. I'm just trying to make a, a presentation that would be similar to things that we've learned already, and so you know, easy to relate to. What if we look at possibility as a third dimension of time? What if we consider that in our present state of consciousness we only have access to certain possibilities, but if we could change our consciousness, if we could expand our consciousness or make our consciousness aware, more aware of these higher dimensions of time, that would open up new possibilities that we didn't have before. We could suddenly see ways to move through possibility space that we can't see right now. We're blind to that because of our identifications. Identification is like a blinder. Huh? You think, I am this body, I am this mind, I am attached to this material existence, I must function in this way. And because of this, our possibilities become limited, mechanical. Program. That's why it's called conditioned consciousness. Uh, when our consciousness becomes unconditioned by material energy, then we get back so much freedom. Our original nature is actually spiritual. It's actually in this domain, the time domain. Uh, 
the domain of pure consciousness. Uh, and I want to suggest that these three dimensions of time have real manifestations in our consciousness. Well, what are they? Oops. Come on. The, the natural flow of time from one moment to another uh, gives us what's called chit in Sanskrit. Chit means consciousness itself or awareness. The contrast of one thing with another. That gives us perception. Uh, that gives us situational awareness. Uh, Self-identity, self-consciousness, cognizance, desire. All those things. These all come from the chit factor, which is a product of time, the flow of time. Then in eternity,